what's happening YouTube welcome back to Sense of South Jersey with me Kellen for another fragrance video today um, today's the third installment of my forgotten fragrance series and this one is going to be called the sport fragrance edition so um, if you're not sure or if you're asking yourself you know what's considered a sport fragrance to me what I, what I think it is is when you have a, a fragrance line or house that takes their original formulation the original fragrance and they just freshen it up they make it a little bit lighter maybe a little bit more wearable or a little bit just a little bit different it doesn't necessarily mean that it, it's to be used you know before or after a sporting event or any any sort of exercise um, in certain cases I think certain fragrances do well in those situations and other times they're just a little bit different from the original version maybe the fragrance line is just kind of capitalizing off the success and momentum of the original fragrance and then just making a slight variation flanker to it um, either way what I have for you guys today is four classic men's masculine sport fragrances that I have in my collection we're going to go through each one I'm going to describe one each one to you but before we jump into that list what I want to say is of course subscribe to the channel if you're new and you enjoy what you see and always check out the of South Jersey Instagram page if you have an Instagram so you can see photos of fragrances from my collection and of course channel updates um, and also if you haven't done so already make sure to hit in the comment section what would be maybe your top three fragrances that you'd like to see brought back if you've already done so I really appreciate it but I want to see what people's second and third choices are um, so far the running um, number one fragrance is Reeve Gosh that we people would want to see brought back again that's definitely one I would like to see brought back and uh, Czar too by Van Cleef and Arpel so I would love to hear from you guys what are the ones you want to see brought back in the comments section let's get started all right so the first sport fragrance that I want to talk about today in this list is from the house of Lacoste it is the first flanker to the original Lacoste it is Lacoste Eau de Sport so I was you know fortunate enough to pick up a tester bottle of this you can see what the box looks like here pretty plain you can see demonstration tester and you can see the bottle here with that alligator sticker it says Eau de Sport built-in sprayer this was my scent of the day I shaved and I used the original Lacoste aftershave, uh, which is light enough to where you can mix it with a different fragrance. And the similarities between those two anyway, they're pretty close. So I think it's easy to, to you know, kind of layer those two, the Sport being the, my fragrance and the aftershave being the original Lacoste aftershave. So here, check out the bottle again. On the back, it does say the notes. It has it in French and in English. So this is categorized as an aromatic fougere came out in 1994 the notes listed on the back here you have lemon grapefruit lavender menthol vetiver sandalwood and oak moss and online there was a lot more listed but I think that's just the gist of of you know what's involved too so this one opens up very bright very green uh, green very clean very similar to the original one but it doesn't have as sharp green notes this one kind of dries down to a muskier lighter version I noticed some hints of like Dracar Noir in this fragrance it's still green but it's not as sharp as the original one um, this is definitely out of the shower category this is very very fresh very uplifting very bright I definitely could see this one being involved in a sporting event like if you're about to anytime I see Lacoste I always think of tennis so let's just say you're about to say uh, you know play tennis or you're about to work out or, or do anything that is going to require exercise this is a good fragrance to do so and I think maybe that was what they were going for um, and unfortunately it's discontinued I don't know why maybe again the, the differentiation between this one and the original there wasn't enough for people to want to uh, deviate from buying the one that they originally had but this fragrance is perfect for that I think it's awesome for in terms of a sporting event I think you know after after a shower after working out this is an awesome scent to put on and kind of just go about your day it's it's you know not offensive it's not it's strong but it's not over the top it's not going to be in your face it's not as cloying in the beginning as the as the uh, as the original one or that that opening on that one is very sharp as much as I love it the the green notes the mossiness in the original one um, are a little bit lighter in this one and, and I think this one is, is fresher as well too but it still has a musky oak moss dry down and like I mentioned I get bits of Dracar Noir in the late dry down not to say that it's, it smells similar to that fragrance overall but I do get bits and hints of Dracar Noir in the late dry down performance on this one it's pretty decent I'm getting you know four or five hours out of it which which isn't bad for a sport fragrance and it's I, I don't mind reapplying I really love the scent it's really nice and this is like just a you know early 90s 1994 but it's it's 80s to me all day long it's got the 80s look to it I, I just picture the tennis player white headband white sweatbands you know just playing tennis that Lacoste vibe and it's such a green and to think of this is what a sport fragrance was then compared to what they are now it's wild so this is the first one on the list Lacoste Eau de Sport all right so the second fragrance on my forgotten fragrance list sport edition is from the house of Cartier it is Santos de Cartier Eau de Sport or Eau de Sport Santos de Cartier not really sure in which the order it's supposed to be pronounced I've seen a couple different things online it came out in 1989 
And this is, I would say, out of the fragrances on this list, the furthest removed from the original. And what I mean by that is it doesn't really smell like just a slight variation from the original. It's an absolutely its own entity. So you can see here, no built-in sprayer. Let's see what the distribution on this bottle is. Nice sprayer, though. This stuff opens up a very light green, minty, fresh, spicy. Spicy is the best way to describe this fragrance. Um, I don't necessarily associate this immediately with like an exercise or sporting event because of the spiciness. I think it, it kind of just makes it seem like it's its own fragrance. It's definitely lighter than the original Santos de Cartier, which has that sweet sort of tobacco smoky vibe where this one is just all about the spice. Some of the notes of caraway, vetiver, and coriander in this fragrance really give it the spiciness. Um, so that's the best descriptive word to it, but it also does have a freshness, a mint note to it. And um, that is, I think, where the sport kind of comes into play. So, you know, maybe people did throw this on after uh, at some sort of exercise or any sort of sporting event back when it came out in the late 80s. But this is a very 80s fragrance. Like, I, I picture somebody, you know, wearing this going out, button-down shirt, big gold chain, hairy chest, because it has that strong, harsh opening. Um, this is light years away from any sports scent that would be released today or any cologne flanker that would be released today. Um, it, and it's still very masculine and it, it's very unique. It's probably the most unique scent on this list because the other ones are just sort of a couple notches away from the original version of the fragrance, but this one is stands out on its own in that, in that regard. But, um, it's very spicy, fresh, it, it is masculine and it, um, doesn't last that long. Like I'm getting get four to five hours, which isn't bad for a sport fragrance again, but, um, this one is, is unique and it's very rare. It's hard to find. This is the only, I don't have any other matching type of products for this scent just the fragrance but i could see this being something that you wear fall and maybe springtime um it might be a little too much in the summer and i don't think it's strong enough to last in the cold weather all right so the third fragrance on my forgotten fragrance sport edition list is from the house of ralph Lauren, and it is polo sport splash so this stuff is there's hardly any information on this on the internet i researched and i looked um, and you can see here on the back, I want to show you this. It says right there, Sport Splash. It's um, from Cosmar, Warner Cosmar Distribution, New York. So this is definitely vintage. Um, it's a plastic bottle. Uh, this is how you can see here. It's just kind of like a splash bottle, but it's got a stopper in there too. So if you wanted to like, you know, just put some in your hand, you can see um, this stuff. Should, probably should mix well with the Lacoste, right? This stuff is um, interesting. And what I, what I read is, is that... In the early 80s, because Polo, uh, Polo Green came out in the late 70s, in the early 80s, this was used as a promotional item. So I'm not sure if it was sold in stores or if it was, it was very brief. And essentially what it is, it's, it's, it's the same thing. It's just that it's an Eau de Cologne version of the original Eau de Toilette. So there's really no difference in terms of the scent. It's just a lighter version of it. It's just a cologne versus the Eau de Toilette. And it came in these splash bottles and, you know, they're plastic and I could easily see this, you know, you're, you're done working out, you, you shower, you just squirt some of this on your chest, rub it in and you go about your day. But it is strong for an eau de toilette. You get that oak moss, you get the pine, the green in there. It might be slightly toned down from like, say, the vintage eau de toilette polo, but you take the current formulation, smells just like it, and which is good. That's good because the main needs a current one still solid, and I still believe that it is. But this is awesome, and I wish I had a bigger bottle of this. There is a couple on eBay I've seen, and they're in a big glass bottle, but they're asking so much money for it. I got this for 20 bucks, and I have a ton of fragrances, so this will last me. And if you want like a lighter polo, you don't feel like spraying, you want to be able to bring it somewhere, the plastic bottle, you just squeeze some of this out. And it, it smells awesome. And it's very green, earthy, you know, oak moss, masculine. This is this this is very sporty. And uh, for, for back then, in that era of what was considered a sport fragrance back then too. So I'm happy to have this one. Polo Sport Splash. All right, guys, the final fragrance on my Forgotten Fragrance Sport Edition list. I say the best for last. It is the most rare of the flankers to my favorite fragrance, Koros Oda Sport. So take a look at this one. This came out in 1986. You can see the back. This is a 100 ml bottle, built-in sprayer. You can see the bottom of the bottle. Take a look at the box. You can see here, Chorus Oda Sport. So 80s. This thing at the time was like 35 bucks. I think it said it was a lot more than that now. So let's shoot some of this out on a tester strip here. 
So and like I mentioned, this is the most rare of the Koros flankers. Um, it didn't last long in terms of production. This one is a fresh, clean, breeze air, like breeze air, cold air feeling. This one is uh, not nearly as warm as the original one, where the original one is has a heaviness to it the entire way. The opening and the like, you know, slight beginning of the dry down of this one are different. Once it gets to the base though, I really can't tell the difference. And I think that was sort of the issue with this fragrance. Maybe that's why it didn't do so well because it's really not that much different from the original Koros you know, give or take a few notes, give or take a few um, sections of the fragrance's life cycle while it's on your skin. So like civet is not a note in this fragrance, but it still smells musky, it still smells animalic, but just not to the extent that the original one is. It's only two or three notches removed from the original Koros. And I tested this one on my hand with my uh, vintage Koros, and I tested it on my hand with my current formulation Koros. And this is a little bit more like the current formulation, whereas the vintage Koros is just a whole other animal. But it's it's still heavy, but not as heavy as the original. Still still has that you know classic animalic vibe to it. Um, just look at the detail like that comes in with these things, like some of their advertisements that come with the bottle. Like look at that. You don't get stuff like that in there today. Like the description. A man has never known a more dynamic fragrance. Aromatic spices and rich, deep woods fuse with the spirit and strength of a modern man, joining forces to create the perfection of you. <laughs> Such a ridiculous advertisement. Um, it's blue. It's a plastic bottle. Uh, the, the stuff smells awesome, though. It's Koros. I mean, it's Koros to the core. It's just a little fresher, a little lighter, a little diluted. It's, I would say, 80% of the original Koros, but this stuff is awesome, and it is strong, too. Out of all the fragrances that, that I showed today, this one performs hands down the best. Seven to eight hours, two sprays max. Two sprays is all you need. I put it on yesterday, and for, I would say, a good three hours, I was smelling it really strong on myself. Like, I was almost like, did I, only maybe I should only put one on. And that's just a testament to how it was made back then, and this is clearly vintage. Um, this is a Parfum Core, um, era, I guess the, I think the, the batch code is here, EMB6035071120, you can see that there as well too, so not sure what era it is, I didn't look it up, but it, it's, it's vintage for sure, and it's very strong, um, so it absolutely lasts long, I could totally see this being a, what was considered a clean gym scent back then, but you still wanted to smell masculine, you still wanted to smell, have that rough vibe that the original Koros gives, and this, this does that, it's just, Dial back a little bit, that's all. So really cool, really happy to have this in, in my collection. I got it on eBay and it was about 90% full. So, you know, the fragrance is like right about there, but you know, um, it just doesn't feel nearly as heavy. The bottle's so much lighter. All of these bottles are lighter than the original ones because they're all plastic. So that's pretty funny, except for the Lacoste, that was glass. But um, again, it just might not have been that different from the original Koros. Um, maybe people like the animalic, uh, you know, level that the original one was at, where this one was just a little bit dialed back, toned down. But um, this is still awesome and I'm really, really happy to have it. All right, guys, so that was the list of four. Let's do a recap. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rank them on my favorite to my least favorite out of all of the four fragrances, sport edition that are forgotten that I brought up today. So number one, I think it goes without saying, you already know what it is. This is the best one. I love it, it smells amazing. It's Koros to the core, just a little fresher, a little lighter. Um, still lasts a long time, it smells amazing. So uh, this is gonna be number one. Number two, close second, Lacoste Eau de Sport. This stuff smells incredible. I'm gonna spray it on again. Uh, it's just so clean, um, such an awesome aromatic fougere. If you love green aromatic fougeres, this stuff is amazing. So is the original one. The original one's probably gonna be easier to find, but if you can get this, just do it. Uh, number three, for the uniqueness, the fresh, spicy, Santos de Cardia Eau de Sport. I didn't show the box last time. I apologize about that, guys. So here you can see that. Take a look here. Um, this one, the top and the bottom too, so pretty basic box, but this is what that looks like. I forgot to do that. So this is gonna be number three. It's um, the least sporty of the, of the bunch, but it is also sporty at the same time. So, uh, but when I think about, you know, sport fragrances, this one, it kind of reminds me of its own, like it could, it could have been named a different flanker name, something, you know, Sano, Santos, Tacardier, uh, mint or, or spice, and it would have worked and I would have believed it, but this is a uh, third favorite. Um, last is gonna be Polo because it's the same as Polo Green, it's just a cologne version too. So they really didn't differentiate anything. That may have been why it was only a promotional item. And if that information is incorrect, I'm not sure. I'm just basing that off what I have read. But um, this one, it's essentially the same thing. It's just a uh, eau de cologne concentration too. So one of the things, the common theme, aside from the Lacoste bottle, 
is going to be the plastic bottle. So they're all plastic. And I think sport, and that's where I think the sport, the presentation, because it comes about, these were meant to be manhandled. These are meant to be thrown in a gym bag. These are meant to be active fragrances. You don't bring the glass bottle with you to the gym because something could happen. It could break. It could crack. The, gla uh, the plastic, you don't have to worry about it too. So I thought that was really cool. And that's just a, 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 just a, a peek at what it was like back then for sport fragrances, how they wanted to market it. And I think that they did intend for a lot of these to be you know, brought with you when you're going to be active or exercise or something like that too. So the plastic bottle, that, that's a dead giveaway. Um, but those are my sport fragrances for the Forgotten Fragrance Editions. Again, number one, Koros, then Lacoste, Santos, and Polo. All right, guys, that'll do it for me today. I hope you enjoyed the list. I really enjoyed making it. I'm really excited about these fragrances. They're awesome. I'm so happy to have them in my collection. Thank you all so much for watching and hanging out with me today. Make sure to um, subscribe if you haven't. Make sure to put in the comment section what fragrances you would like to see brought back. Maybe give your first, second, and third choices. And also let me know what you thought of this list. Do you have any of these fragrances, any of these sport fragrances? Did I miss one? Should I have mentioned another sport fragrances or one that I need to get or try or get a sample of? Please let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts on these fragrances in this list and the video, of course. Um, again, thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. And I will see you all in the next video. Take care.